Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. Today, we are going to be talking about Ripple XRP. We're also going to be addressing a few things in regards to prices. So with that being said, let's not waste any more time. Let's just get right into it. So first and foremost, I hope everybody is having a great day. The weather is extremely different today than it was yesterday. Yesterday, we were getting a ton of rain due to the hurricane. I hope everybody got out of it safe. I know a lot of people in New Jersey and stuff, uh, their houses and stuff flooded. So I hope everybody uh, did, you know, pretty much survive it and get out of it safely. Um, but right now we are looking at a green market we are up about 2.44 percent bitcoin is ranging above the 49.3k zone which is fairly good we just need to break out of 50.3k and we will be in solid territory but we do see ethereum making its way back to nearly four thousand dollars we see xrp ranging at about a dollar 27 so this is actually fairly good we also see solana making even more moves today up about 13 percent up almost 70 percent on the seven day span uh, which which is incredible to see so everything looks good in that gist i'm going to be updating the market later on in another video but today i want to talk to you guys about some xrp price uh targets and stuff like that so obviously i have made quite a bit of videos on the price of xrp I, i've made videos on it hitting 589 dollars to a thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars and so forth a lot of people still kind of confuse it. They don't understand it. They don't get it. They don't understand how, you know, it, how how could XRP go to any of these price targets and hit a one quadrillion dollar market cap? And, uh, you know, there's not enough money in the world for that, blah, blah, blah. And I totally get it. You know, a lot of people, you know, they don't realize how much money is actually flowing throughout the world. Um, I understand that when we look at, you know, derivatives and stuff like that, where they're, you know, a two point. I think it's like 17 or so quadrillion dollar market. We also look at, you know, B2B spending and, you know, cross-border payment flows. It's like over a, another quadrillion dollars right there. I know that there's so much money to be out there. Like, for example, just in this Appendix D uh, pretty much article here, we do see here that swift messages direct the transfer of nearly five trillion dollars worldwide each day so that is every single day guys um I'm, I'm just gonna say right now when we talk about you know inflows of cash flow like five trillion dollars a day um i don't think that people realize how much money that actually is because on a 365 day basis in a year you know that's over one quadrillion dollars right there it's like 1.825 quadrillion dollars in just payment flows um, a year that is just processing payments right and we're not even accounting for like i said the derivatives market we're not even talking about the the cash flow b2b smes all that stuff which we already know is trillions of dollars i've already talked about it multiple times on this channel i don't need to talk about it anymore um but i am going to address a few things so first and foremost uh there was an article posted uh back in december of 2020 it's actually this article here xrp cryptocurrency isn't disappearing and the party is just getting started now this is obviously talking about xrp you know hitting some price targets but also a few other things as well so the price at publication was actually 57 cents this was back on december 10th this was before the sec lawsuit even was a thing now in regards to this right he mentions a few things so first and foremost i want to talk to you guys about xrp supply because i think a lot of people real think that like all right well there's a hundred billion out there and ripple must own like a, a wide percentage right well actually that's not true right XRP is owned mostly by the individuals out there who hold XRP. Ripple holds 6.3 billion. And the reason why they have this escrow account is because they need to have this in the escrow account to secure the idea of first off cross-border flows. They also talk about liquidity, which will obviously, and even if we look up here, right, Ripple has uh, methodically sold XRP and used it to incentivize market maker activity to increase XRP liquidity and strengthen the overall health of the XRP markets. That's why when we see, you know, the escrow releases, you know, here and there, a lot of people make videos on it and they're like, wow, did you guys see like this much XRP float out um, in escrow? Like what could be happening? Could it be, you know, them paying the SEC off, whatever the case may be, but that's actually not it. That escrow account is actually used for liquidity basis for XRP to actually fund, you know, line of credit, ODL, whatever the case may be. We also know that the XRP ledger itself runs off of XRP. So pretty much XRP 
is feeling a lot of Ripple products at the end of the day. So I just want to say right now, just get the idea out of your head that you know XRP is owned by Ripple and it's owned by all these individuals in Ripple, and that you know they're making a killing off of everybody, they're dumping on everybody, but they actually only own a small percentage, as we do see here on this chart. So just to clear that up, just to give you guys a basis on that. So there you go. Now, I just want to say, if you have held XRP from five years ago, and say for so you only invested $1,000 into it. Now, this was June 19th. This was when um, XRP was worth 85 cents. You would have had $147,000 because you would have got $173,000 um, XRP at that time. Now, I'm just going to say right now, at the all-time high this year, you would have had almost $400,000 off of a, a measly $1,000. And I say measly because $1,000 is easy to come by. So when we're talking about the overall deflation of XRP, XRP will increase significantly in price throughout the years. But where will it top out at? Where What will it, what will it be worth in, I don't know, another five years or another, you know, this so-and-so, right? Because we know that ISO 222 tokens are going live in 2022 of November. So when we talk about the inflows of cash, we also talk about, you know, where could it go long term? We do see here, this is my last article on Ripple XRP. Now, this is all from this article, but I, I, I circled the most important things. You know, he's talking about how XRP has increased over almost 100% compared to like the S&P 500 and all this stuff. But we do see here, I've seen compelling analysis predicting it will reach a dollar in the short term. Definitely did. Uh, to $10,000 in the long term. I do believe that we could get to that $10 price range. And I know a lot of people are going to call me crazy. But when you actually look at the things that XRP and Ripple are doing, it's pretty easy to see the true valuation behind XRP. I believe XRP is solving a problem in cross-border payments and that more people, businesses and countries, businesses and countries will utilize XRP in the future. I just want to say that businesses and countries. If you think XRP at $10,000 is crazy, look at Bitcoin whose price is above 19,000. Now, yes, I do understand the overall idea of circulating supply, but I'm not going to compare um, an asset like Bitcoin that is literally a speculative store of value to something like XRP that is going to be unlocking a massive amount of liquidity and also allow SMEs to gain capital and liquidity very easily through, guess what? Line of credit. And these are credit lines built with the um, the ODL service, right? We even see here, these companies using ODL on RippleNet, a network of payment providers will be able to buy XRP from Ripple on credit and will be charged a fee on the amount borrowed. Now, these are more so for SMEs, small, medium enterprises. Um, you guys really need to look into those if you were not aware on how much they actually um, are in terms of a market. They are a 10 to $15 trillion market. They are generating 100 to $150 billion a year. Now, in regards to this, we also see here, um, roughly one decade ago on 522.10, uh, which is known as Bitcoin Pizza Day, as you guys already know, uh, purchased two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin. It would have been worth 190 million. Now, just imagine, right? You purchase pizzas, I don't know, back in 2015 with XRP. Uh, who knows how much you would have needed? Just imagine how much that XRP would have been worth right now. Now, we do see here, um, I am bullish on XRP and believe that over the next five to 10 years, its adaptation uh, will become mainstream. And there is definitely a chance XRP could create a new generation of millionaires. And honestly, at a dollar to two dollars, it actually already did. There's a lot of people who already are millionaires now from XRP. Now, we also see here, it is estimated that roughly $5 trillion gets moved on a daily basis through the SWIFT network. I believe the true long run value of digital assets will be derived from their utility. One utility certainly is store of value. Now, of course, we do understand that Bitcoin does have store of value, but it's more so speculated. And I personally don't even think that that is a true utility factor. It doesn't really matter to me, but that's just my overall opinion. Now, we do see here another utility for digital assets is payments, which is the class I would put XRP in. XRP has an extremely fast remnants time of around four seconds and is cheap on per transaction. I could send XRP to someone in Asia right now and they would get it and convert it to their local currency faster than you could make a phone call. Now, this is where things get interesting. When you think about trillions of dollars moving through the SWIFT network each day, it is not crazy to think XRP could become a vehicle to move denominations of 100 to 1,000 or $10,000 in a single XRP through a cross-border payment system. Now, <clears throat> here's where things get interesting, right? So a lot of people think that XRP is never going to hit these targets of $100 to $1,000 to $10,000, right? 
But what if you were a company that wanted to send, I don't know, a billion dollars? We'll just say a billion dollars, right? Because a billion dollars in business is really nothing, right? A lot of, a lot of you know, major businesses and corporations move that much money. So say for so you wanted to move a billion dollars. And say for so XRP was, I don't know, trading at about, we'll just say all-time high. Three dollars and like around fifty five cents. I know that it hit three dollars and eighty four cents on some exchanges, but we'll just go three dollars and fifty five cents. You would need roughly about three point five billion XRP. Now, what if it was trading at a thousand dollars, right? If it was trading at a thousand dollars, you would need roughly about a million XRP, right? That is a big, significant difference when we talk about needing about. Well, at three dollars and fifty-five cents. Sorry, I did the math wrong. But at three dollars and fifty-five cents, you would need about roughly almost two hundred and eighty-two million XRP. At a thousand dollars, you'd only need a million XRP. Isn't that a lot easier to transact with? I think that that's the biggest problem where a lot of people think, well, why would XRP need to be worth a thousand dollars? Why would it need to be worth this amount of dollars? Because when we're talking about on-demand liquidity right? A lot of people think that there's not enough money in the world for this. But when we talk about on-demand liquidity that is used when it's needed, instead of it being locked away in storage in Nostro Vostro accounts, XRP could hit these price targets because realistically speaking, they it needs to, right? Especially if it is going to be utilized the way it's supposed to. Because moving that much money, and even David Schwartz said this himself, moving that much money is a lot easier with a product or an asset that is more valued at about a hundred to a thousand dollars than you know we're talking about dollars to cents, right? So I definitely believe that we could hit a hundred to a thousand or even ten thousand dollars long term. Um, but we do see here his personal XRP strategy is twenty percent of his XRP at ten dollars, at a hundred, at a thousand, and at ten thousand, and he will hold the remaining twenty percent until a later date. Maybe this never materializes, but when you look at Bitcoin's um, meteoric um, rise, anything's possible, right? Now, I personally believe that XRP could hit these targets all because of the idea on the basis of XRP being used for line of credit for massive opportunities in the SME business. We already know that the small medium enterprises need uh, credit and capital to pretty much expand their businesses as we do see even here them saying that. Um, and not only that, but they struggle, right? 70% of cross-border flows on SMEs are problematic. And I do think that the ODL service will definitely help that. We even see, you know, ODL uses XRP as a bridge currency to facilitate cross-border payment flows. Those payment flows could be worth a significant amount of money to a lot of businesses out there. And it would need to be a higher price target. It would have to be. It would just be more efficient to transact a thousand XRP than, you know, 200 million XRP. I, I, it just, it makes sense. Um, and I understand that a lot of people can't grasp the idea of market cap and circulating supply and just value by that. But think about it like this, right? Okay, when you are talking about an asset like XRP, and when you're talking about something like Apple, all right, comparing the market cap to, you know, Apple from XRP, yeah, I get it. You know, it's hard to see. But the fact is that Apple is selling people smartphones and products like, you know, MacBooks and stuff like that. That's what you're investing in in terms of their market cap. When you're investing into XRP in terms of their market cap, you're investing into a product that could ultimately facilitate and change the way payments flow every single year. And when we talk about SWIFT doing $5 trillion each day, and we also have to talk about the fact that SWIFT is a very slow and very expensive payment processing uh, platform, even with SWIFT Go coming out, compared to XRP, then I don't see a reason for the market cap of XRP to not be significantly higher. Just imagine if you could buy stock, right, in SWIFT, right? Just imagine if you could buy stock in the SWIFT protocol. Now, in my opinion, I don't think that, you know, SWIFT would be valued at, say for so, a $59 billion market cap. I think SWIFT would be extremely higher Especially considering the fact that when we talk about, you know, SWIFT moving $5 trillion a day, what do you think the market cap of SWIFT would actually be? 
because that is the biggest game changer. If you could put a price tag on Swift, then you could put a price tag on XRP, but you simply cannot. So with that being said, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. If you guys do want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.